10 years seems like a while, but especially when you're dealing with nature and science, it can feel like a flash. That's what we found as we asked some of the foremost experts on algae. So much has been done and so much is left to do. On the shores of Putin Bay, Ohio State Stone Lab research students sample Lake Erie. These samples will be analyzed and scrutinized, looking to learn more about one thing, algae. You remember it all too well. Algae getting into the Toledo drinking water system, causing the water crisis of 2014. Half a million people told at first not to touch it, later told not to drink it. Are you shocked that you're still out here talking about algae? No, I mean, 10 years is not a long time in terms of turning the algae problem around, so I, I'm not surprised that we're still out here. We're on the water with University of Toledo Lake Erie Center Director Dr. Tom Bridgman. He studied Lake Erie algae 10 years before the water crisis, before many understood what was happening out here. So we've learned a lot about dealing with the blooms, but we haven't made a lot of progress in preventing them in the first place. Is yeah. that frustrating? That's frustrating because uh, that's something we, we have control of. We, we, can, we could prevent these blooms if we really wanted to. Fuel for the bloom comes from nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen coming from a variety of places, including farm field runoff after increasingly heavy storms recently. There is some good news on that front. The phosphorus concentrations in the river have plateaued over the last 10 years. We want them to go down. Uh, we're still about twice, roughly twice as high as our target that we want to be. Justin Chaffin, research coordinator at Stone Lab, is encouraged that nutrient levels that make the bloom grow are not increasing. Ideally, they'd be going down quicker. Legacy phosphorus, that also makes this complicated as well. If you stop all phosphorus applications, if it's fertilizer or manure or sewage, there's lots of land out there that will still leak phosphorus. You might have phosphorus that got out there 15 years ago that might still be working its way through the system. Then. Or decades ago. The solutions don't just happen here in the lake itself. They happen back through the source, through the Maumee River. And that is a tall order as well. The Maumee River watershed extends as far back as Fort Wayne, Indiana. As that source solution takes shape, more is known about algae than ever before. Monitoring and predictions are much more timely. Researchers are also focused on a bloom's makeup, and maybe more importantly, what makes it toxic. Plus, we now know that blooms are susceptible to viruses. Probably part of the 2014 water crisis was because there was a virus in the lake that attacked the algae and caused it to break open. And that toxin was released into the water and got through the water treatment plant. Water treatment is as good as it's ever been. Dr. Bridgman has no concern about that. The bloom, though, persists. And it will until the source, phosphorus and nitrogen, stay out of the water. If you and I are sitting out here in the next 10 years, what do you think we're going to be looking at? What do you think we'll be seeing? Uh, I think that we'll still have blooms in 10 years. Hopefully they are reduced. Hopefully they are maybe half as big on average as they are now. Um, that would be my hope. I don't think we're going to eradicate them in, in 10 years unless we have a major change to the way we uh, manage our watershed. 10 years from now, I would hope there'd be less phosphorus getting in, uh, in the river. Uh, we're able to keep it on the fields when we have heavy storms. Um, and I would hope that would lead to less, less bloom in the lake. Sean Hagerty, 13 Action News.